Hi everyone, welcome. Hi guys. Hope everyone's had a good Monday. Taylor, you want to give it to like 7.03? Yeah. We'll okay. give everyone a few minutes to transition. Taylor, do you want me to share my screen? Or do you want to? I can. Okay. All right, guys, we're just going to give everyone a few minutes to get transitioned in and see if anyone else is going to join us. If you want to put um, the grade of your students in the chat just so we can see what grade levels we have parents from, you can do that. Ash, if you want to get start, if you want to get started, I can just let people in as they come. Perfect. Time. I can do that. Awesome. Hi, everyone. Thank you for uh, coming to uh, our session, Bridges Math Grades Three through Five. Uh, Taylor and I are super glad to have some people here. We didn't know how many people would be here, so we're super glad to have you all here. I noticed that we've got anywhere from kindergarten all the way up to fifth grade on here, some parents in second, third. So we will be covering bridges in grades three through five specifically in this session. So um, welcome, we are glad you're here. And I'm Ashley Lewis, I teach fifth grade math and science. And I'm uh, Taylor Tyson, I go by Miss Taylor and I teach fourth grade math and science as well. All right, you wanna go to the next one? Oh, yep. Sorry. There we go. Perfect. All right. So we just wanted to um, give a little background on the Bridges curriculum. I know this is new for all of us this year, including uh, the teachers, and it is a program that we adopted just this year. And so it's kind of ironic that we're starting during all of this, and it's kind of been a challenge. But we just wanted to give you a little bit of a background about Bridges. It is a curriculum that focuses on students' really in-depth knowledge of complex math concepts um, and their ability to solve multi-step complex problems. It goes through some direct instruction, some student um, centers, and some investigations, and then open exploration. Students will solve problems using visual models and manipulatives. If we were all in the classroom and able to really do this curriculum right now the way that it should be done, it's a lot of hands-on, it's a lot of partner work, it's a lot of, we got lots of manipulatives and stuff for students to use to actually see how math is working. Um, and so it just really goes in depth for students' understanding of these big math com, um, concepts. And so Bridges has a lot of different layers to it, and that's what we're going to talk about on the next slide. Awesome. All right. Thanks, Ashley. Yeah, so like Ashley was saying, um, Bridges is very intentional with the way they structure their program because it is um, centered in critical thinking and trying to dig deeper. So their units of study is um, the main things that we go through. We get six units. Um, well, some grades have different amounts, but most are six units per grade. Um and you go through them all year, and that's the main content that they'll be learning. Um, it focuses on the power standards that we'll be talking about later in the slides. Um, and then, as we mentioned how they're intentional, they go into other sections throughout the day. So number corner is sort of like a calendar grid, 
And every month they have different things that you'll talk about with the students and different tasks they'll do around the calendar that not only does a spiral review of things that they've learned in prior grades, but also will preview different topics that they might be introduced to in the next unit of study. Uh, the workplaces are the games that they'll be playing in groups. Um, like we said, it's very hands-on, interactive um, model, which has been very interesting to try to do this year. But um, like Ashley said, when we do come back in the classroom full time, we have all these great manipulatives and center work that they'll be able to work on throughout the year with partners and in groups um, to continue further practicing their skills. And the last part is the home connections. That's sort of a homework book that they get to have throughout the year. Um, some students might have sent them home this year, some teachers, um, and they just further check the understanding of the students from the current unit of study. So we just wanted to go over a little bit of the power standards or what I like to say is like what students should be able to do in each grade level. And in this, we're going to focus on grades three to five. But I know the other session is doing kind of the same thing for K to two. So if you're interested in that, they will be doing something similar. We just kind of wanted to go over with you what your student should be able to do when they leave a certain grade level. So we'll start with third grade. Yeah. And also, if you have students in other grades, both sessions will be recorded and shared um, from Mr. Anderson. So you can always check out their video as well to see what they shared. So we'll start with third grade. Um, there's a lot on the slide. I'm not going to read it exactly um, from what it says, but you can look at this. And one thing to really um, focus on is that a lot of these build up on each other. And so as you'll see, as we'll go through these slides, you'll kind of see how each of them is building on the next, um, the next grade level, especially in the fluency part down towards the bottom. So in third grade, students start developing an understanding of multiplication and division and using strategies for multiplication and division within 100. So usually that's not getting into long division and things like that yet. It's just kind of developing an understanding of what is multiplication and division. Starting with a lot of different strategies, using visual models, um, just kind of your basic multiplication and division. Um, they're also developing an understanding of fractions and fractions with a numerator of one. And then that will really build into fourth grade and then fifth grade, we hit fractions a lot that year. Um, they'll start developing an understanding of the structure of rectangular arrays and area. Um, 2D shapes are big in that grade and describing two-dimensional shapes. And then they'll start solving multi-step problems. So word problems involving multiplication and division that are multi-step, not just one-step problems. And then really something that I focus a lot here is this fluency. So when they leave third grade, they should be able to multiply all their facts from zero to 12. And that is super important because if students leave third grade being able to know all of their multiplication facts, zero to 12, they're going to be able to be even more successful in fourth grade. And that's really going to build on what their teachers are then able to do with them in fourth grade. Awesome. Thanks, Ashley. Um, and like she was saying, in fourth grade, all of these things just continue to build upon each other. Um, so the big beginning of the year lessons that we tend to do are understanding how to multiply and divide with multi-digit numbers. So they're taking that knowledge from third grade of the basic strategies that they learned and the fact fluency to be able to actually do it with two, three, and sometimes even four-digit numbers. Um, so Students coming into fourth grade knowing their facts, their multiplication facts from 0 to 12 is just even more helpful for them because then they can quickly do the beginning steps and see how they can build it into more than multi-digit multiplication and division. Um, so that's how typically you'll start the fourth year of those power standards is de uh, deepening their understanding of multiplication and division. Um, and then fractions are a very large part of fourth grade. They take their basic understanding from third grade, which is numerators of one, and they learn to do things such as finding equivalent fractions, adding and subtracting fractions, multiplying fractions, showing them in different ways, using a number line. Um, so they're really taking that foundation that they built in third grade and just continuing to develop it. Um, and as you can tell, the geometry continues to develop as well. They're looking at um, 
classifying not just based on size, but using things like parallel lines, do they have perpendicular sides, looking at their angles. Um, so they're just continuing to develop those skills. And um, as Ashley mentioned, the fluency is really important. If they can come in to fourth grade knowing how to multiply zero to 12, that's very helpful. Um, but having that fact fluency of being able to multiply or divide from zero to 20 before entering fifth grade is really important. Seeing that connection, um, fourth grade is usually when they start to notice it, of the fact families where like they can know if four times three equals 12, well then 12 divided by three is gonna be four. Um, so if they can have that understanding before going to fifth grade, it will help them a lot with the deeper content they'll be learning in fifth grade. Thanks, Taylor. Um, fifth grade, so this is kind of when we start putting it all together before they leave us and go to middle school. Um, so we kind of build up on that. One of the biggest things in fifth grade, we spend the majority of our year doing is fractions and they have to be able to add, subtract, multiply and divide fractions. And it builds upon in fourth grade, they were mostly doing fractions with like denominators and it turns into unlike denominators, which again, just goes back to needing to know their math facts to find equivalent fractions. So we always tell them then it kind of goes back to if you can do your math facts, then this becomes so much easier. The steps become a lot, a lot simpler. So we move on to multiplying and dividing fractions, which they don't do dividing fractions in fourth grade. So that's kind of a newer one. Um, and then we go into a lot about decimals. So the place value to the tenths, the hundredths and the thousandths place. And they have to be able to do the same thing. They have to be able to add, subtract, multiply and divide with decimals. So that even takes that just one step further. Um, and we start talking about two digit division and two digit multiplication. They introduce volume in fifth grade, which is one of the first things we usually start with is volume. And we kind of talk a little bit of a review of area and perimeter. And then the coordinate plane. So the X and Y axis is um, in fifth grade. And we start talking about the quadrants. And then just a little bit, geometry is not a huge focus in fifth grade. We talk a little bit about two dimensional figures by their classification, but it's not um, super big part of it. Really multiplication and division and adding and subtracting, multiplying and dividing fractions are the big power standards that they need to be able to leave fifth grade knowing how to do. And then the fluency, if they can now multiply and divide within 20, now we're doing multi-digit whole numbers. So we're talking about how do we multiply two digit by two digits. We talk about different types of strategies, but with this, we do teach them like the standard algorithm or the traditional way of multiplying. That's the fifth grade standard is they have to be able to use the standard algorithm. So we kind of, we don't take away those visuals, but we start moving on to being able to just do it the more traditional way. And with them knowing their facts, that really, that really helps. So as you can see with all of these, they kind of just build up on each other. So it really helps um, if they can be able to do these things in third and fourth grade before they get to fifth grade, they'll be set. Yeah. And it sort of goes along with Bridges um, philosophy as well. They are grounded in, you start with the concrete items, so tangible things they can touch, whether it's blocks or visuals or manipulatives. And as they advance within the grade, but also throughout the grade levels, they're becoming more abstract. They're so writing it down as formulas and solving it on paper. So you'll see that from the third to fifth grade happen, whereas third grade would use a lot more visuals, drawings, manipulatives to solve these problems. Fifth graders are going to be using more formulas and just writing down the problems and solving it. Oh, right. Do you want to stop here for questions oh, real quick? Yeah, I think so. I was just thinking. Yeah. Do you guys have any questions about that or specifically um, about anything that your students should be able to do in any of those grades? I know we just, we said it a, a bunch there. Or any slide you want us to go back to or anything like that? You could put it in the chat too. Okay, well, if you do, feel free to, there we go, any recommendations? Yes. Okay, good question. We actually have a slide on that in just a couple. So we're going to go over some um, websites and some apps and some things that you can do to reinforce multiplication facts here in just a couple. So good question. Awesome. All right, yeah, and if at any point um, we say something that you guys don't understand because we use math language a lot together <laughs> or if 
you missed something on a slide and wanted to write down or ask about it, feel free to unmute. Um, yeah. All right. So as the question asked, how can I help my child with this? Because we know that you guys aren't teachers and we know that you sort of feel like, especially this year, what is my role in this and how can I help? So, um, Ashley, we'll go ahead and sort of talk about these websites. Yeah. So this website, Math at Home from the Math Learning Center, we linked each grade. Taylor, if you don't care to click mm -hmm. on one just so they can see it, we linked it here for um, third, fourth, and fifth grade. And so these websites are great. They actually go along with bridges. And so if you up at the top, you can select um, a set. So that's kind of like what they're learning at that time. And up at, under grades, you can find other grades too. But um, Taylor, will you just click on, yeah, anyone. So it kind of goes through some different activities um, for them to do. So this is a would you rather. It says using pictures, model, words, or symbol justify your choice. I would rather have. So it talks about cutting um, into four inch squares, cutting into three inch squares, and it gives you the dimensions. And you can kind of just talk about the math that is involved there. I like that it gives a challenge and then like a follow-up to talk about at home. And then they always have like a printable version at the bottom if you want to print and copy. But all of these go right along with the unit or the module that you're doing, that they're doing at school. Um, and so they're just really cool little math. And at the bottom too, it kind of tells you like this one's fraction and geometry. So it gives you kind of what overarching unit they are talking about there and these are just some fun things that you can do at home has a lot of resources down at the bottom they have some online games where you can search for more information so we linked the third the fourth and the fifth grade one here too but you can get to all the grades up at the top um and click on any of them if you'll click on grades yeah so it uh, goes all the way up to fifth um, it's a great website to use just to talk to your students about what they're doing in math and give them a little overview. So I do really like this website. Yeah. And the other nice thing is Bridges, because I know like I have lots of links and I tend to forget which ones. If you just Google them, they come up very easily. Like that's what I tend to do when I'm teaching. But if you look at math at home, that's what their um, main hub is called. So if you just Google Bridges Math at Home, you can easily find their main page and find what you need to do. We have a question in the chat. Um, yes, so, yes, Ms. Taylor and I teach math and science. They are broken down by content starting in fourth grade. So we have two teams in fourth grade and two teams in fifth grade, and they are um, a math and a science and an ELA and a social studies teacher. So in fourth or fifth grade, they would be put on one of the two teams and they will switch classes halfway through the day. Awesome. All right. Um, besides the Bridges free websites that they provide, there's um, other ways to help with things like fact fluency um, and math skills in general. So, um, oh, sorry. Um, I know growing up and even now my students will tell you, I love games. And that's how I learn. Um, and so, and I think it's an easy way for parents to help kids practice skills without making them feel like they're doing homework all night long. Um, so three games that Ashley and I really liked that would help practice general math skills. Um, the first one is Fraction War. We think that this is really relevant to um, third, fourth, and fifth grade. If you have dominoes, um, each person gets their own set of dominoes and you would flip it over and they'd have to make the um, mixed number out of the fraction that they see on the domino. So one of the examples they show is if a domino has five on the top and two on the bottom, that would be equivalent to two and a half. And then out of the two people, whoever has a larger number would win the dominoes. Um, and obviously at home you can try to help the kids depending on what grade they're in or challenge them depending on if they're older or if they're getting um, more fluent with their skills. Um, race to 100 is also a game that you can play with tools at home. It's just a deck of cards. And you would flip up the card and have the student add the numbers that they see on the card. And their goal is to get exactly to 100. Um, if it started with a younger kid, you could let them go over it. Um, or maybe challenge an older student like, oh, you broke 100, but now we have to subtract and get back down. So you can practice those skills with a fun game. 
Um, and the last one would be multiplication war. Each person would flip up a card. The first person to say the answer to the multiplication problem would win the cards. So just taking common games that you might not might know and adding um, math skills to them can make it a fun way for kids to practice and build some of that fluency. And then the last thing we, we know we had a question about it, which is always a great question is how do you practice math facts at home? Because it gets for bring, I know to just use multiplication fact cards and just have your student practice. So we put some websites on here and apps, especially Math Tango. That's an app for a phone, an iPad, or a tablet. Extra Math is one you might be familiar with with your student already doing at school. I know it's an expectation in fifth grade and I think in fourth grade, mm -hmm. right, Miss Taylor? Yeah. That they do extra math. And that's kind of, not that it's not good, but it's kind of boring. It's just a repetitive practicing of their math facts. But it is really good. Your teacher can change the time level. Instead of three seconds, you have two seconds to answer it. or So it, we the teacher can kind of adjust it. But that is addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. So some of your students might have a password and a pin to extra math. Um, I know, Miss Taylor, which one was the one that you found that looked really fun? Was that the Math, math Tango? Tango. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Math Tango was an app um, for a phone or an iPad or a tablet. Math Ninja was a, a website that you could go to, too. That was like kind of ninja-based where they answered facts and raced against people. Um, so all of these are really great websites. You can write any of these down um, to kind of practice. I know that kind of just practicing them can get a little bit boring, but these are better ways to kind of keep them engaged in practicing their math facts. Yeah, and we had a good question in the chat. Um, any recommendations for students who get frazzled easily by timed activities? Because that was me. Um, I grew up on a thing called TIA, which was time test, and the teacher had a big timer at the beginning of the classroom, and I panicked. Um, so I like to do, I say, like backwards, like have them practice it slowly first on one of these fun websites where they're like not realizing that it's like the same speed flashcards that you might use. And once they build confidence with one of the numbers, then have them go on a site where they could be successful with um, the timed and then they could build confidence if they're like, oh, I just did really good with my twos on math tango and then I beat the time on extra math or with my flashcards with my parents or my family, they might be like, oh, now I'm more confident. Um, and that's sort of how I would approach that. Yeah, I agree, Miss Taylor. I, I, I know in fifth grade, um, we don't do a ton of timed, a ton of timed facts tests. For me, it's more important that they're just practicing them um, rather than being able to do it really in a timed way. Obviously, I want them to be fluent with it, but what? what fluency looks like for different students is different with the time. I more mean um, that they could see, you know, 25 times 32 and write away no five times two and not need to like draw a picture or um, something like that to get it at fifth grade. So the time for me is not as important as them just, you know, being able to get that answer Right math. every every time. We don't do a ton. I don't know, Miss Taylor, if you in fourth grade, we don't do a ton of timed fluency right. tests. Extra math is really the only timed Time. instance of practice. Yeah. But, mm -hmm. yeah, maybe finding practice times outside of that before they go and so they can build their confidence, mm -hmm. I think, would be good. All right. Um, see if we're at our 725. Yeah, we're almost at our, we're at our 725. So if anyone has any last minute questions or things that they'd like to ask us, we'll be on here for a minute because we're not leading a session next. Um, so feel free to add it to the chat or um, unmute anything. We really appreciate you guys coming and hopefully this was helpful. Um, I think Grant will be sharing these out as well, these slides. So if you missed something, he will be sharing out these slides. But um, I'm really excited about this new Bridges program, and I'm even more excited when we get all of our students back in the building and we're able to do it like it is intended to be, and we're able to really dive deeper with curriculum and with the manipulatives. I think it's going to be awesome. Absolutely. Thank you for everyone for coming. We know. Yes. Have a great second session. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, guys. Bye, guys.